Hello and welcome to this video. I'm going to show you in this video how to create an assignment and also how students can actually use Zuni as a tool to be able to have student agency, basically that student-led learning and student initiative. So there are two interfaces. What you're seeing right here is the student interface and then over here is a teacher interface. So they're very different, um, both incredibly functional and powerful tools. So when we want to go and look at what kind of assignments, when we think about you know, our student learning, we think about direct instruction, teachers needing to give assignments for kids to do. And then we also think about students being able to have a chance to explore and learn. So assignments take place here under my classes, or we connect with Google Classroom, Google Drive, or we can link to any learning management system you use. So when we talk about that student-led learning, students can get and explore about the wonder of the day, be inspired. So we have a couple classrooms, <coughs> actually several classrooms, and this is what they do. They actually have their students every morning for morning meeting. They get in and the first task the students have to do is they know that they're going to watch the wonder of the day and they're going to click on kids news. So if they click on the wonder of the day, it will open inside Zuni and the way the wonder works, you just need to click on that little box again and then it opens and for students who may struggle with reading, it will also read to you. But also if you scroll down, you have a great, you know, opportunity to see this vocabulary here. Teacher can actually print this as well as if they want to. And students can enjoy this, uh, whatever the, the wonder of the day is. And actually, teachers can have students submit questions and everything as well. When they finish, this is open inside of Zuni. So I just click my two little arrows over here. And then I want to write to the teacher and tell her how great I thought this wonder was. Um, I loved what I learned today. I didn't look close enough to see what it was. I love what I learned today. Um, but the student <clears throat> what may answer like one teacher says a golden rule. And they just click it right here. Now what's very important is that when we come over to the teacher platform and let me just refresh, the teacher will be able to see that comment from the student right away. So she can tell really quick, do a quick, it's like a little exit ticket. She can check and see who has, you know, answered this and done something right away. So there's part of that, you know, student autonomy in the learning. They get to go and I mean, even though they're guided to go and listen to the wonder of the day, they just love it because it's just interesting and exciting. Same thing with news for kids. They can just click on the news for kids, take a look at world news. Like when we're working with small communities in rural areas who don't really have a lot of opportunity to get exposed to a lot of what's happening in the world, this really helps to do that. And again, they can just pop back in and give their teacher a comment back here. So this is some of that student, um, one way the teachers can just have the morning meeting set up to where students can go and explore. And then the, also the other thing they have is some teachers will say, go on into Zuni, go to an audio ebook and pick your favorite audio ebook. And when you're in there looking at your audio ebook, just listen to it and then share back with me what you learned about it. Or they may have their top questions that they want to answer and they just click which teachers they want to share it with and it shares back with the teachers. So that two-way feedback loop on resources is super important. It's something we've never had before. We actually can get the student voice on what they like or don't like. We teach them opinion writing with rating and reviewing content. And then maybe this is like my favorite storyline online out of all these books and I can just plant it, save it to my learning garden, and then I can always refer back to it whenever I want to. Kids can even add content. There's a Chrome extension they can use. So maybe if they're doing a research project, they can find great websites, add them, and share those back with the teachers as well. So the way that you can work your lessons is very diverse and very um, easy and user-friendly for our students and our teachers. Now let's look at a more formal lesson. Let's say let's go into the teacher platform. Teachers can see their grades up here. What's really important is this helps in the differentiating because we know that even though we have a class of 25 students in fifth grade, that they are not all in fifth grade, that I'm actually going to need to go down to grade three and find resources as well to be able to differentiate that learning. So I can do that. And let's say, you know, let's, let's look with um, what's up this month. And let's go take a look at Martin Luther King. <clears throat> Now I can find these resources and I can assign them directly into Zuni. I could assign them into Google Classroom. I could copy the link and put it into my Schoology or Canvas, whatever it is you might use. So if I come over here and I say, okay, I've got these selected. I've already assigned this to my students. So I can see that I've assigned it when I click next. I can see which students I've assigned it to. I can uncheck them any if I want to. And then I just click confirm assignment. I can give the begin date, the end date. I can lock the assignment, which means once that end date passes, it can't be accessed. If I left it unlocked, it would go into the past due, but students could still access it. 
I can put my notes and, and um, instructions and everything right here and I click confirm assignment. So this one I've already, you know, put a couple of these resources over in the student's assignment, but that's how easy it is to assign. If I wanted to just copy the link to put it into my Schoology or Canvas or something, I can just come over here, copy the link. I've got it, and I can go put it into another tool if I want to. Um, I can connect my Google Drive over here. I can connect Microsoft Teams over here, Microsoft OneDrive over here, and that's how easy it is. And then I can go and take a look at all my classes and assignments right inside here. But let's go look, and let's go in as the student, and then we'll go back and look as the teacher at that piece. So if I come and I say, okay, I can see quickly that I have 18 assignments that I need to work on. And this is very important for me as a parent because my kiddo is always missing assignments and I don't have like the big picture and just a glance. And then I see uh, he has three classes and he has 11 assignments doing computer science. Let's go take a look and see what's happening that he has to do. The check mean that that one's already done. The reason it's still showing up is it probably didn't have an end date, so it didn't go on over into completed assignments. And then I can come and see I have all my annotation tools. And like this was the one that I had um, shared, that I had assigned to this student. I open it up and you see annotate. So when I click on it, I can annotate it right from within Zuni. And so I don't have to go open up a bunch of other apps or anything. I can go to my text tool. I can go and get my, you know, um, assignment down here at 24. Come and put I have a dream in here and then you know teaching kids strategies to be able to then cross off once you finish with a word so it makes it just easier more efficient to work with and then i can come back and complete this whole thing go back and forth between text i can make shapes all those kind of things and then i just click save and then i have it saved and my teacher the teacher will instantly see this right away i click ok now, an assignment that I had given, so if I had come over here and maybe I wanted to give a game as an assignment, so maybe if I went to my Martin Luther King resources and I found some games and interactives, one of the things about when we send kids out to Link, sometimes it's like, well, you know, what did you really do with that Link? We want to know. So I could just go into Zuni, what's up this month again, go to my uh, Martin Luther King, and then I can look. You always want to remember that you have these filters as teachers. Here's my games interactives, my lesson ideas, my print materials, my smart notebooks, my teacher pay teacher freebies, and my videos. So I'm going to go to my games and interactives, and I've already assigned this one, but I just go through the simple motions again of assigning it again. And, when I, and then what my instructions told my student to do, though, is that when they finish that assignment, they're to take a picture of their final product on it. So this was an interactive crossword puzzle. So when they click on it, now instead of the opening the annotation feature, it opens in a new tab because it's a link. And then I come in and is, when I finish it as a student, I can take a picture. Um, most cases, a lot of cases, kids know how to take a screenshot. If not, we always teach them a little bit on the Chromebook how to do it, but they're so fast. Now I could just come in and when I finish this crossword puzzle, let me go ahead and click play first. Then, um, I will be able to upload that to my teacher so my teacher can see what I accomplished online with this game. So that's very important because then once you can see what their answers were, what happened, where they had a problem, it can really help out. And then another feature we're adding very soon too is an annotation tool for websites. So also you would be able to just take a picture of it completed through Zuni's annotation tool and it will automatically pop it into the assignment for you. So when I come back over now, I could just simply go file upload because I would have taken that picture and saved it on my computer. And then I can just go upload that picture, open, and then I have that picture. If the assignment had said, you know, respond with a Google Doc, I instantly could open Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides. If the assignment was, you know, I want to listen to you read here, I want to hear you read an audiobook. I could just simply click my audio video option and then I could read the book aloud and then that would save to my teacher. I could have an audio and video of me reading the book. I could create something completely new. If I wanted to come and annotate some, you know, freeform drawing, I can do that as well. So it's pretty cool. The features are super great, super friendly as you see how easy it is to use and go back and forth with everything. Kids can also say their progress to teachers where they are in their progress. And then when they're all done, they can just submit their assignment and then teachers will see it over in their assignment tool. So if I come over to classes and assignments right here, I'm going to come in and if I go into this one. And then if I want to go to, I think this was one of the assignments, so I can click here. 
and I can come in and see what my students have done. This was in my demo student I was working with. They gave me a progress. So that's according, you know, teaching our, our kids to think about how to manage a project. And then I can give them a grade right here. I can come in and click and I can see all the work that they've done right here on through that annotation tool. Super easy. I can give the student comments on their assignment as well. That's it. So you can see there's multiple ways to do the assignments. A, 